Hi guys, we're back with sessions 25, Stroke Assessment. Today our discussion is going to be identifying strokes, stroke symptoms, diagnosis and treatment, care planning and management of the stroke patient. And if you go to dearnurses.com, it's packed with helpful information. There is a stroke series there that might be of very great help to you. Okay, let's talk about identifying strokes. A stroke might be caused for more than one reason. It might be caused by obstruction of blood flow to the brain, and that would be known as ischemic stroke. Or it may be caused by bleeding into the brain, which would be a hemorrhagic stroke. A stroke is now defined as a brain attack, just like you would say for the heart. If you had a problem with the heart, you could say you had a heart attack. Now, what would happen in the brain when you have injury to the brain if it happens on the right, the pathways cross, the nerve pathways that is, you would expect to find the problems on the left and vice versa. Also, most strokes are what you call ischemic strokes. They account for about 85% of strokes. Hemorrhagic strokes only account for a very small amount. And one of the main causes of hemorrhagic stroke, which is bleeding into the brain, is high blood pressure. Because we know that stress can also play a part in having a stroke. Now, let's talk about stroke symptoms. This patient is saying, nurse, I'm not sure what is going on. My right arm feels weak and my right eye is cloudy. What is happening, this patient is displaying the signs of a stroke. If you were the nurse, please do not ignore these symptoms and say, I'll be back later to check on you, I'm busy. Act fast, act right away, because you never know how far this damage can go. What other symptoms could you find? Sudden severe headache, mental confusion, nausea, vomiting, visual disturbances, facial weakness. You get patients saying they have a weakness on one side. It may affect the speech, hearing loss weakness of either the upper or lower extremity, it might be the arm, it might be the leg, resulting in the patient having trouble with coordination, standing firm. So never ignore the symptoms of a stroke. Act fast, get an assessment, let the doctor know and find out so that they can follow through to make sure there's nothing serious. I also forgot to mention what's called a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack, when a patient may actually fall to the ground or just have a very brief period of just feeling out of it. Some patients, it never might progress to anything, but there are instances where it is a sign of an impending stroke. So you need to pay attention, document it, assess that patient, document it, and do not ignore it. Now, what are the diagnostic tests that might be done for a stroke patient? Uh, we have the CT scan and the MRI, they're both diagnostic tests, and they're the other ones as well. If you take the time to go to dearnurses.net, the clinical settings step-by-step -step, chapter 18 is packed with helpful information on strokes. Now, we talked about the patient inside. How about the patient outside? She's taking a walk, this lady, and saying, I have such a terrible headache. There's someone on the phone whose speech has started to go slurry. And then, of course, this man, as he approaches his car, his left arm is weak. Well, if you should be outside of the hospital and you notice someone is having a stroke, you probably need to call 911 right away. It's not your decision to say that it is or isn't. You can just act fast and do what would be normal to help that patient if, of course, it's, you know, there's no, not help around. Call 911 because there's only what you call a three-hour window when a patient has a stroke for taking quick action that something can be done. Now, when a patient arrives in the hospital from the time that those stroke symptoms begin until action is taken and to the completion, there's like a three-hour window for CAT scanning, making a diagnosis, and doing something. And patients who've had ischemic strokes usually receive what is called a clot buster. TPA is the name of that clot buster. Well, now, this is not appropriate for every patient. It only works for the patient who has an ischemic event going on, not for patients who have hemorrhagic stroke, because it'll just cause more bleeding, since clot busters work to dissolve clots. Of course, some patients who have a clot, uh, sorry, have had a stroke, will wind up in the ICU on ICP monitoring. If you'd like to know more about intracranial pressure monitoring, I suggest you go to uh, dearnurses.com. There is a case study there on uh, ICP monitoring. 
Now, here is a patient who's in the ICU after stroke. Patients who've had strokes may require quite a lot of care in the intensive care. They may have ICP monitoring going on. Um, you also have to pay close attention to things like uh, corneal abrasions because remember some people may have lost their blink reflex, making the eyes very dry. Get an order from the doctor so that you can put drops in the eyes to prevent that happening. How about deep vein thrombosis? potential for deep vein thrombosis and we know about TED hoses as well as SCD, those special machines that work to inflate and deflate those stockings. Eye and oral care. I, uh, oral care is very important in preventing infections of course. We know about pneumonia, turn to Q2 hours, turn cough and deep breathe patients. If they're on the ventilator they will require suctioning and it is important to let you know that the stroke patient is also at risk for seizures because of the injury to the brain. Yes, it can happen. Now, the stroke patient, unfortunately, may wind up with permanent weakness of one or more extremities. May Some people may remain weak, one right on the right arm and the right leg, or it may just be the arm only, whatever it is. It can be a very trying situation for patient and family. Remember to do patient education. You must also take into account the patient who's had a stroke might be the only breadwinner in the family, and that does make it really difficult for everyone. So you're going to have to learn to be patient with that family, do patient education. Sometimes it may even call for the social worker talking to the family and making long-term care arrangements. Physical and occupational therapy are done in the immediate setting, in the uh, cl clinical setting. Also, when you have a patient who's had a stroke in bed, make sure you align those extremities very well to prevent things like foot drop and the hand. You can put like a ball in the hand or a rolled wash dot to prevent contractures. Rehabilitation of the stroke patient may have to go on for a very long time, so bear in mind these patients do have to go through a lot. Now, the cranial nerves 9 and 10 may also be affected in the stroke patients. Those are the two nerves, the hypoglossal and the vagal, to do with uh, gagging and swallowing. Some patients have the ability to swallow, but they cannot guard their airway. Some of them, they choke a lot because of the damage to the airway those cranial nerves have been affected, so pay close attention. And of course, like I said, if you'd like to learn more about stroke and its consequences, go to the clinical setting, step-by-step, -step, Chapter 18. Have a great week and stay posted for more clinical information. God bless you all.